Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In today's video, we're going to show you how to build the mechanical portion of your Acro. It's a really cool machine design. It's very accurate using 14 tooth timing pulleys, along with the ability to attach the laser on your X carriage, or a pick and place, or even a draw bot. Along with that, this machine can grow up to 1500 millimeters by 1500 millimeters, or can be compact down into a 55 by 55. So all you have to do is change the V-slot throughout this video. Everything else in the assembly is the same. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, for this first step, let's go ahead and assemble our wheels. Should have 12 solid Delrin V-wheels. So let's go ahead and unload the contents. Inside you'll see a wheel shell, two open bolts bearings, a precision shim, nylon hex nut, and another precision shim. So to assemble this wheel, simply pop in one of the bearings here, flip it around, add your precision shim, add your additional bearing, snap that into place, and that's your wheel assembly. So let's go ahead and assemble the additional 11 wheels, the additional components left after your wheel kit, we are going to use later on in the steps. So just put those to the side. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to go ahead and grab our extrusion that we have for this assembly. So I have three 20 by 40s, two at 500 millimeters, one being at 1,000 millimeters. Since this is a 510 assembly for the Acro, the 20 by 40s that I need are as I just described. So in addition to that, I'll have a self-tapping screw and my power drill and what we are going to do is pre-thread our extrusion and this helps with the assembly so let's go ahead and get this out of the way first by securely grabbing each piece of extrusion I'm going to use my self tapping screw to thread into each hole on both sides of the 20 by 40s so let's go ahead and get started so taking your self tapping screw go ahead and put it on the end of your drill inserting it into the hole of the extrusion and holding firmly go ahead and screw into the extrusion and back out same process on the additional hole and that's how you pre-thread your holes for this assembly so we're going to go ahead and do the same process for each additional piece. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so now that we have our extrusion pre-threaded, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we are going to be assembling one of our Y-axis plates. So what I have here is a GT2 14 tooth timing pulley, four M3 10 millimeter screws, four nylon hex nuts, four six millimeter spacers, four precision shims, four solid V-wheels, four M5 30 millimeter screws. In addition to that, the tooling that I'm going to use is my ball driver set here. So to get started, let's go ahead and take notice to our plate. As you can see, the configuration here has the motor at the bottom of the axis. So the motor is going to sit here at the bottom as the plate rides back and forth along the axis. As far as the wheel placement goes, you'll see two slotted holes here for an adjustment for preload on your wheels, which would be the tightness to the rail. And then two of our fixed position wheels, which would be these two holes here on the top portion of the plate. So with that being said, let's go ahead and insert our screws, our M5 30 millimeter screws into each one of these holes. Now placing the plate on its back, We'll go ahead and start our stacking configuration with our aluminum spacers. So each one of our screws 
is going to receive a six millimeter aluminum spacer. So let's go ahead and put those on each screw. In addition to that, we'll add our precision shims to each screw. Following that, our solid V-wheels. If you have any issues with that precision shim in the middle, you can simply spin it onto the screw, it'll find the center of gravity, or you can use your ball driver and sift it into place. Once that's complete, I like to add my nylon hex nuts just to keep these wheels secure. Okay, now that we have our wheels in place, let's go ahead and tighten these down with our ball driver set and span our wrench. So turning the plate to the side, I'm going to tighten down each one of these wheels. Okay, once that's complete, we will be coming back to the bottom wheels to loosen these slightly, that way we can adjust the tension to our rail. So just keep that in mind. And of course, when you tighten down these wheels, don't over tighten it. This is acrylic. So you are prone to cracking the plate if you over tighten the system. So just keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and move forward. So next, we are going to go ahead and attach our NEMA 17 motor. So like I was showing you at the beginning of this step, our four holes here for the purpose of mounting this motor. So since the wheels are on the inside of the plate, the motor is going to go on the outside of the plate. And we also want to pay attention to the direction of our wire. So what I like to do is attach my motor with the wire facing me, just like so. And that way I can wire all of this back to my controller board. It'll be nice and organized. So from there, let's go ahead and attach our M3 10 millimeter screws to the inside motor holes here. You'll see threaded holes on the motor and that's where we're going to attach our screws. Okay, once again, make sure that you do not over tighten these screws. Don't want to damage your acrylic plates. Just make sure they're nice and snug and that works out great. So next, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the GT2 14 tooth timing pulley. This is going to attach to our NEMA 17 motor shaft. Now on the motor shaft, you will see a flat portion, which we need to locate. And our set screw is gonna latch onto this part of the shaft to keep a secure mount. So in this direction, where the clamping side is, is how we're going to install our pulley. Let's go ahead and slide it on. And what I like to do is align it with my wheels. So try to find that center point of your solid V wheels. And from there, place your pulley. So since I've located the flat portion of my shaft, I go ahead and tighten this down. And once again, just tighten it until it's snug. You don't want to strip these set screws. Okay, so that is the assembly for our Y-axis plate. Excellent job. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be assembling our next Y gantry plate. So as you can see here, I have my Y axis plate, four M5 30 millimeter screws, one GT2 14 tooth timing pulley, four M3 10 millimeter screws, four six millimeter aluminum spacers, four nylon hex nuts, four precision shims, four solid Deller and V wheels. Of course, I have my ball driver set, spanner wrench. So this assembly is going to be the same exact way that we did our other. The only thing that we need to focus on is our wire direction from our motor once we mount it. So let's go ahead and start the assembly. Once again, locating the holes where our screws are going to be placed. Let's go ahead and insert our M5 30 millimeter screws. Placing the plate on its back, let's go ahead and add our six millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. Next, our precision shims. 
Following that are solid Delrin V wheels. Following that, let's go ahead and tie on the nylon hex nuts. Okay, once that's complete, let's go ahead and tighten down our wheels. Once again, just a reminder, do not over tighten these wheels. It's a possibility that you could crack the acrylic. You do not want to do that, so just a snug, tight feel onto the plate. So once we have our wheels tightened, let's go ahead and install the motor. So once again, the motor is going to go on the outside of this plate since our wheels are on the inside. In addition to that, we need to focus on where our motor wires are going to be placed. Since this Y plate is going to run on the right side of my machine, my wires are going to face towards me. So taking the motor, that's exactly how I'm going to place it on the plate. So turning it around, I'm going to go ahead and install my M3 10 millimeter screws. Okay, once that's complete, let's go ahead and install our GT2 14 tooth timing pulley. Once again, locating the flat part of the motor shaft here, we're going to align this pulley with our solid Delrin wheels. And let's tighten that into place. Okay, so that finishes our Y plate assembly. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So in this step, we need to gather these parts, our X carriage plates. So if you want to pause the video just to identify which plates are which, you should have one with long slotted holes here for the adjustment of our laser and then our back plate. And this is where our motor will attach. So we also have four solid Delrin V wheels, eight precision shims, four nylon hex nuts, our timing pulley, which is also a GT2 14 tooth timing pulley four M5 40 millimeter screws, eight six millimeter aluminum spacers, four M3 10 millimeter screws, our NEMA 17 motor, and for our tooling I have my ball driver set and spanner wrench. So let's go ahead and get started first by mounting our motor to our back plate. Once again you'll see the configuration here for the whole spacing to accompany our motor. So let's go ahead and install the motor. Now with this back plate Pay attention to where you're placing your motor as far as the direction the wires are turning. So for this specifically, we want the motors to, to go in an upward direction. And this is for wire management. So since this is going to be the back side of my plate, I'm going to install my motor here with the wires facing up. So aligning the holes to the motor, let's go ahead and insert the M3 10 millimeter screws. Okay, once you have that complete, go ahead and put this assembly to the side and let's move forward to our additional front plate. So paying attention to the whole spacing here, we have slot holes at the bottom and our fixed side here for our wheels is gonna be on the top side of the plate. So taking 40 millimeter screws, let's insert those into all four of these holes. Once that's complete, place the plate on its back and let's start the stacking configuration here for our wheel sets. So this is going to be a sandwich configuration with these two plates. So we need to adjust our spacing in between the plates. So with our six millimeter aluminum spacers, that's exactly what we're going to do. So insert a six millimeter aluminum spacer on each screw, followed by a precision shim. Then add your Delrin solid V wheel. Following that, precision shims. Next, six millimeter aluminum spacers. 
Okay, so once we have our wheels established and the configuration necessary, let's go ahead and move back to our back plate. We need to go ahead and install our GT214 tooth timing pulley. So once again, slide it onto the motor shaft, locating the flat portion to lock your set screw in, just like so. And let's go ahead and tighten this into place. Okay, and once you have that complete, let's go ahead and align this back plate to our front plate. Paying attention to our holes here, these are going to align with our screws that our wheels are attached to. So go ahead and place that onto the screws. From there, I'm going to add the nylon hex nuts. Okay, perfect. So once that's complete, let's go ahead and tighten these wheels down. Okay, once that's complete, keep in mind this plate is going to run on the x-axis, just like so with the motor at the bottom. Another thing to keep in mind is when we established our GT2142 timing pulley, your alignment should be in the midpoint of your wheels. So if not, you can always make that adjustment with these set screws. As you can see, mine is aligned. So that's exactly what you want. In addition to that, remember to adjust the tension on our wheels, we have these slotted holes at the bottom of the plate. So we're going to loosen these once we establish our position on the rail and then tighten our wheels to the rail. So now that that assembly is complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to assemble our X carriage to our linear rail. So in this step, we need to gather these parts, our 20 by 40,000 millimeter rail, since this is a 510 Acro, We'll also need our GT2 timing belt, our X carriage assembly, four black angle corner connectors, six M5 T nuts, four M5 eight millimeter screws, and two M5 set screws. In addition to that, I'll have my ball driver set and spanner wrench. So to get started here, first we wanna go ahead and establish preload onto our linear rail. So by doing that, we will then have smooth linear movement and no wobble in our gantry. So let's go ahead and start there. So taking our X carriage assembly, let's go ahead and run it across our 20 by 40 rail. And as you can see how my plate is fighting currently, so I have too much preload on the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen my bottom two screws. That way they will slide down on the slotted holes here to make room for that adjustment that we need to make. So let's go ahead and loosen those screws. Okay, once they've been loosened, you can see how we have movement. That's exactly what we want. So now let's go ahead and run this across the rail. Okay, so once you have the gantry plate on the V-slot, from there, what I like to do is flip the system onto the top. That way gravity is already pulling the system to the rail. And at that point, we can establish a nice preload to our rail. So pressing down on the wheel, I'm going to use my spanner wrench on the back end of the nylon hex nut. And I'm going to lock this into place. So once you get a nice snug feel, then you can release the wheel and tighten down the wheel. Okay, so we have one done. So let's go ahead and move to the back side. Once again, pressing down on that wheel. Let's go ahead and snug that and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, so once you have that complete, you should see smooth linear movement here and there's no rocking motion whatsoever in your gantry. If there's rocking motion, you need to reevaluate the tension that you have placed on these slotted holes. But as you can see with ours, it's a nice smooth linear movement. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and move forward. So next we are going to use our GT2 timing belt and we are going to run it through the system 
and full length, making sure that the teeth are facing down towards the track. So what I like to do is after running a decent amount of length through the track, is I pinch here in the middle to create a tent in between the wheels. That way I can wrap around my GT2 14 tooth timing pulley. So as you can see, I have it snagged here, coming up over the timing pulley. We'll go ahead and pull that tension back onto the belt, just like so. And from there, we will go ahead and feed the additional length all the way down to the other end. And I like to keep an uh, even amount on each side of the 20 by 40. So let's go ahead and get that done. So now that I have the belt pulled through, it's time to go ahead and tension the belt to where we have smooth movement with our belt system. So here at the front part of the rail, and we will do this for both sides of the 20 by 40, we're going to place our M5 T-nut. So go ahead and grab one of your M5 T-nuts and go ahead and place that into the track here. What I like to do is bring that T-nut in about 20 millimeters and that's for the purpose of the Y to X mounting config. So the black angle corner connectors are going to go here on the sides. So we want to put that belt tensioner to the start of the black angle corner connector. So pulling some tension there, I'm going to grab one of my set screws and lock it into place. So just make sure that's nice and tight. And you can leave the excess for now. I will show you what we're going to do with the excess once we complete this process. So let's go ahead and move on to the back end of this rail and do the same exact thing. Now on this end, this is where we will get the proper tension that we need for the belt. So pushing the T-nut in about 20 millimeters, I'm going to pull that belt tight and add my set screw. Make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want to over tighten it because you can eat into the belt, but you definitely want a sturdy mount here. And that looks good. We have the proper amount of tension here in the belt. And one way to tell if you do have the proper tension, take my ball driver, is the belt's going to sit in the bottom of the track here. So what you're looking for is a spring on your belt. So when you press down, it springs back up. As you can see, when I press down, it springs right back up. So that's a proper amount of tension. So that's just one way to tell if you have enough tension on your belt. Now let's go ahead and move on to the mounting of our black angle corner connectors. Okay, so moving back to our black angle corner connectors, what we want to do is make sure that we're paying attention to how the system is going to be set up. So the motor is going to be at the bottom of the axis. So our black angle corner connectors need to go at the top here. So using our M5 T-nuts and 8 millimeter screws, we're going to mount the black angle corner connector here, and then it's going to attach to our Y plates. So make the adjustments necessary to accompany this position. So as you can see, I'm Adjusting the position here of my 20 by 40, I'm going to put in one M5 T-nut into the top slot here because my motor is at the bottom. Placing my black angle corner connector like so because it's going to attach to the Y plate. I'm going to lock this into place with my M5 8 millimeter screw. Okay, and I'm going to mirror this on the other side. Another thing to really pay attention to is how these black angle corner connectors mount to your 20 by 40. You want them square with the end of the V slot. So as you can see, mine are flush against the rail. That's precisely what you want. So now let's go ahead and do the same process for the other side. Okay, so once you have your black angle corner connectors assembled to your rail, 
That completes this step, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So moving forward, on this step we will be assembling our Y-axis plate to the 20 by 40 500 millimeter rail. So what we need to gather is our 20 by 40 500 millimeter rail, our Y-axis plate assembly, 2 and 5 T-nuts, 2 and 5 set screws, our GT2 timing belt, and of course our tooling will have our ball drivers and spanner wrench. So to start this off, first we need to make our adjustment to the wheels to make sure that we have the proper amount of preload on our rail. So let's go ahead and run this across our 20 by 40 rail. Once again, if you have too much preload on the system already, we're going to go ahead and crack these two wheels loose. Once you've loosened both wheels, you should see movement on both wheels. From there, go ahead and run it onto the rail. It should fit with no problems. From there, like we did our last rail, we're going to stand the system upright and let gravity pull these wheels down while we're also pressing on each wheel before we tighten it down. So an easy way to do this is to simply lift up on the plate while you have the wheels in position. And from there, you can tighten this assembly down. So as you can see, using my spanner wrench, I'm actually using the V-slot to hold this in place while I tighten down the wheel. This is a quick little trick that helps out a lot because this can be quite difficult to add that tension. So same thing for the additional wheel. So once you have the proper tension on the wheels, you shouldn't have any wobble once again in that gantry. As you can see, it's just smooth linear movement, guys. That looks great. Now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to our belt. So similar to how we did the X carriage, we're going to run the belt through our track first, through both wheels. And we'll just feed that until it goes all the way through. That way we can assess how much belt we have left. So I like to leave about the same amount on each side. From there, I'm going to pinch the belt on each side to attach it to our GT2 timing pulley. Establish a connection to the pulley. And from there, we'll go ahead and add our M5 T-nuts. First on this end, I'm going to add the M5 T-nut. And with the Y-axis, you can keep the T-nuts right here towards the edge. That's completely fine. You don't have to worry about the black angle quarter connectors on the back end. So from there, let's go ahead and add our set screw and tighten this down. Once that's complete, go ahead and rotate your system. Pulling the belt tight on this one side, go ahead and slide in your M5 T-nut. And keep that tension. And let's tighten it down to our M5 T-nut. Just like so. So once you have that tension established with your belt, remember a good way to test it is to check that spring in your belt. Once you press down and you release, you should see that belt spring right back up. Excellent. So now that that's complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, moving forward here on our next Y-axis, we are going to be assembling it the same way we did our previous. So let's go ahead and gather our parts, 20 by 40, 500 millimeter rail, our Y-axis plate, GT2 timing belt, two M5 T-nuts, two M5 set screws, our ball driver set, and spanner wrench. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and set the tension on our wheels to our rail. So let's go ahead and get started. So once again, loosening the bottom two wheels, let's go ahead and set that tension. Once again, taking my spanner wrench, I'm going to set it into place here and work on one wheel at a time, assessing that pressure onto the one wheel, I'm going to tighten it down. Moving on to the next wheel. Same thing, 
pressing up on the plate and down on the wheel, we're going to tighten that into place. So let's go ahead and check our gantry plate. Make sure there's no wobble. That looks good. So we have the perfect amount of friction on each wheel. Good way to check for preload is all your wheels should be touching the rail and you should have friction, but you should also be able to rotate that wheel just like so. But if I let go, it's going to move the rail. It's a good way to test that preload, but you should not have any wobble in this gantry plate. That looks excellent. Okay, so let's move forward to our belt. Once again, making sure that our teeth are facing down into the rail. Let's go ahead and run this all the way through the extrusion. Once it's through, let's go ahead and pinch the end of the belt and attach it to our timing pulley. From there, go ahead and pull the belt somewhat tight and let's add one of our M5 T-nuts to one end and grab one of your set screws and let's tighten that into place. Rotate it to the other side and make sure to pull that tension before you add your T-nut and then go ahead and slide your T-nut into place here and let's add our set screw. As you can see, we have no slip in our belt. We have the proper amount of tension on our belt. Once again, go ahead and check that. You should see that spring. Once you press down on the belt, it should spring right back up. If you don't have that spring, you need to add more tension to your belt. All right, so now that that's complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we're going to connect our end plates to both of our assemblies here. So this is both of our Y-axis assemblies. So what we need to gather is our two assemblies, four double T-nuts, eight M5 10 millimeter screws, eight self-tapping screws, four end plates. Of course, my tooling, I have my ball driver and a Phillips screwdriver. So to get started, let's go ahead and grab one of our end plates. And as you can see, there's two holes here towards the middle. That's where we're going to attach our 10 millimeter screws and double T-nuts. And this is for the purpose of our base assembly. So we'll have cross members running across the assembly on the bottom portion. And that's exactly where that extrusion will connect to the double T-nut. So let's go ahead and run the 10 millimeter screws through each hole. Taking the double T-nut, go ahead and set it into place. And from there, you can actually hand tighten these. So we're not gonna tighten them completely. I'm just gonna thread it into the double T-nut to where we can slide our extrusion into place. Just like so. So it should be a little bit loose. So for this end plate, let's go ahead and locate the position to where it's going to connect. So here on our assemblies, pay attention to where the motor is placed because this will always ride at the bottom of the axis. So this assembly here is going to be on the left side of my machine. So this end plate is going to connect to the back end of this extrusion. And you see how the, the triangular formation is facing towards the middle of the machine. That's exactly what we want. So from there, let's go ahead and take two of our self-tapping screws and mount this into position. Okay, perfect. So now that that's in position, let's go ahead and move on to our next plate. So since we're working on this piece here, let's go ahead and grab another one of our end plates, making sure that the double T-nut is on this side of the plate. Let's go ahead and grab one of the double T-nuts, placing it onto the end plate. I'm going to thread in two of my M5 10 millimeter screws. Once again, don't tighten it completely. You want a little space there. Okay, so this is going to mount on the opposite end of this extrusion with the self-tapping screws. Okay, so now that we have our end plates in position on one of our axes, let's go ahead and move on to our additional one. So we can just move this to the side. So once again, paying attention to the alignment of our end plates, this is how the axis will stand. So our end plates need to be placed like so. And this will be on the right side of our machine. 
So let's go ahead and grab one of our double T nuts, place it behind the end plate, and let's add our 10 millimeter screws. And for our additional end plate, it's going to sit just like so on the back end of the extrusion. So we need our double T nut on this side. Let's go ahead and put it into position and thread in your 10 millimeter screws. Once again, don't tighten those completely. That looks good. So starting with this end first, let's go ahead and connect our end plate. What I like to do is just run that belt through this hole here. And let's go ahead and attach these self-tapping screws. Okay, flip the system around. And once again, let's go ahead and tighten our self-tapping screws down to this end plate. Okay, excellent. So now that we have our assemblies done so far, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we are going to be assembling the frame of our machine. This is going to be really exciting actually see all these components come together to create our machine. So, in this step, we are going to need all three of our assemblies along with some additional components. We are going to need four self-tapping screws, four M5 15 millimeter screws, four nylon hex nuts, spanner wrench, our M5 ball driver, and our Phillips screwdriver. So what we're going to do first is establish which axis is going to be on which side of the machine. So as you can see here we have our x-axis and our y-axis assemblies. So what we need to do is align our motors to where the wires are facing the back of the machine. So this, this assembly we are going to put on the right side of our x-axis. So let's go ahead and get started there first. Okay, so as you can see, the orientation of my machine now is to accompany the motor direction. So my wires are facing towards the back of the machine. So as you can see on my X axis, my X motor is also facing towards the back. So the front plate should be facing the front of the machine. So now that I have my Y axis assembly established in the right position, I'm going to mount it to the X assembly. Okay, so before we establish that connection between our Y and X assemblies, we need to run our belt through this bottom hole here of the plate. So once you do that, go ahead and stand the Y assembly upright and take one of your self-tapping screws and connect it to your X assembly. Once you have your first self-tapping screw in place, let's go ahead and tighten our additional. Okay, so once we have our two self-tapping screws in place, let's go ahead and attach our additional M5 15 millimeter screws to these two holes. Okay, so now that we have our screws tightened, let's go ahead and take our additional belt and run it right through this slot here just to keep it up out of the way. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and rotate our machine to the other side and attach our other assembly. So once again, pay attention to the direction of your motor. Make sure that your wires are facing towards the back of the machine. So with that being said, let's go ahead and establish our connection between the Y plate and our X assembly. So starting off by taking the belt and let's run it through our bottom slotted hole here, just like so. And let's go ahead and attach our self-tapping screws to this X assembly. Okay, add your additional self-tapping screw. Excellent. So now, let's go ahead and run our belt into the V slot here. Just making sure it's tucked away and out of the way. And let's go ahead and connect our M5 15 millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and run those through each hole. And 
And let's tighten these down. So as you can see, the assembly is coming along nicely here. It's a really nice configuration. As you can see, the 1000 by 500 accompanies most table sizes. Really nice machine so far. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we are going to be assembling our cross members here. So the 20 by 20 1000s, we are going to run across the base to make sure this is a nice, sturdy configuration. As you can see, the machine's coming along nicely. Let's go ahead and finish it off with our 20 by 20s, and then we'll add our additional components. So let's go ahead and get started. So starting here on the left side of the machine, if you remember, we attached our double T-nuts to our 10 millimeter screws. So now we can just slide our 20 by 20 onto the double T-nut. And sliding it towards the right side of the machine here, we are going to slide it into this additional double T-nut. So now that we have it slid in place, before tightening these screws, let's go ahead and bring our gantry forward. And this will ensure squareness in our system. So now that the gantry is forward, we can now tighten down our M5 10 millimeter screws. So what I do is I hold on to the gantry, making sure that it's square, and I'm going to tighten these two screws down, just like so. And let's move to the left side. Same thing, holding on to the gantry. I'm going to tighten these screws down. Okay, so now that we have the front side complete, let's go ahead and rotate our machine to the back side, and we'll finish up our assembly with that 20 by 20. So let's go ahead and grab our 20 by 20 and slide it into the double T-nuts like we did our front side. And if need be, as you can see, I'm loosening these screws just to make sure that this will slide nice and smooth to the other side. Okay, once again, bring your gantry forward. And while holding the gantry towards the end plate, I'm going to tighten down my screws here on the right side first. And let's move to the left side of the machine. Holding the gantry against the end plate, let's go ahead and tighten down these screws. Okay, so now that we have our base established here on our machine, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we are going to be assembling our front attachment plate which is for the purpose of mounting many different devices. So you can add a laser, which is generally what we do for the Acro, a pin, pick and place, definitely a lot of different hole spacings here for different configurations that you might have in mind. It's a really cool, uh, really cool plate and attachment to our front sandwich configuration here. So we're gonna add that as well as our single L brackets to our feet. So that's going to allow you to mount your Acro to a table, which will give you complete stability with your machine. So let's go ahead and gather these parts, four single L brackets, four M5 15 millimeter screws, four nylon hex nuts, two double T nuts, four precision shims, four M5 20 millimeter screws, and our front plate assembly. In addition to that, the tooling you will require is an M5 ball driver and spanner wrench. So to get started, let's go ahead and mount our front plate First, by taking notice to how this is going to align to our sandwich configuration here, these two holes should be facing towards the top of the plate, giving you access to all the additional holes here for mounting of a laser or a different device. So starting off, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my M5 20 millimeter screws and insert them into each one of these holes. And before I do this, I'm going to add one of my precision shims for spacing. So each screw gets one of these precision shims and then insert it into the hole. Just like so. So once you have that complete, what I like to do is go ahead and add these spacers to the back end of the screws. From there, we're going to align this plate to our slotted holes here and our sandwich plate. And what that allows for is an adjustment of this position of your device. So if it's a laser, you can adjust the position based on what kind of job and project you are trying to 
design. So taking this front plate, we're going to go ahead and slide it into the slotted holes here, like so. From the back end, I'm going to add my double T-nut. So by holding two of the screws in place here on the left side and positioning my double T-nut, I'm going to thread in these screws. Okay, so once the left side is complete, I'm going to move on to the right side. But same exact thing, just put your double T-nut in position and we'll fasten it into place. Okay, so now that we have our front plate in place here, you can always loosen these screws, like I said, to adjust the position of where this sets on our, our X carriage. So as you can see, you can sift this up and down to allow for different mounting positions of your device. It's just a really cool option here. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and mount it, keep it in place, just like so. Excellent. So now let's move forward to our feet. So here on the front plate, so these are the end plates of the front of the machine. You'll see a little hole here. This is where we are going to attach our single L brackets. And this will give you the option to mount it to your table or whichever surface you have your machine mounted to. So the main thing to pay attention to with these single L brackets is the spacing. You're going to have one hole that's further away from the seam than the other. The one that's closest to the seam is the one we're going to attach to our end plate. So by doing this, this will give you that option to mount to your table. So taking one of your M5 15 millimeter screws, go ahead and insert it to the end plate. And taking your nylon hex nut, go ahead and fasten that to the back end of the screw. Once you have the nylon hex nut threaded on the screw, take your ball driver and your spanner wrench, and let's go ahead and tighten this down. One thing that's really important to keep in mind is you want this single L bracket square to your surface. So as you can see mine square, that way you get a solid mount to whichever sur surface you decide to set your machine on. So let's go ahead and follow the same process for our additional feet. All right, the machine turned out great. The mechanical assembly came together perfect. As you can see, your machine is looking excellent. So thanks for tuning in guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, Dream it, build it, share it.